Now the Junior Choir will sing Festival Hallelujah by Alan Poe. I hope you enjoy. Sing unto God all the heavens and earth. Hallelujah, clap your hands and sing. sing. Rejoice and sing a joyful song. Sing it loudly, sing it merrily. Sing it softly, sing with a beautiful melody. Praise to the world above. Sing. sing, children, sing hallelujah. God is love. Sing unto God, all the heavens are turned. Hallelujah, clap your hands. And with a cheerful voice, hallelujah. Sing it from
As we acknowledge the land this morning, again we turn to a prayer prepared by Indigenous elders in relationship with the United Church of Canada. So please join me in this prayer. Creator God, we ask you to be with us. We pray for those who are ill and for those we cannot be with as closely as we wish. When we are afraid, help us to remember and to be grateful for water, which gives us life. Help us to be grateful for the land which sustains us and restores us to health. Help us to be grateful for the wisdom of elders who guide us, our young people who deserve a bright future, and our strength and resilience which will bring us to a new day. Help our leaders to respond appropriately to the specific needs of Indigenous communities. Help us to walk compassionately with all who are ill or afraid. Help us to understand that we are all relatives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And in Jesus' name we gather for worship. The light of Christ is alive here in this space, and we invite you to be anchoring in this, this light also alive within your hearts as we worship together.
And so I welcome you on this fifth Sunday of Easter. The season is flying by, and we send the welcome out from Islington United out onto the web to all of those who are gathering in their homes today. We're so grateful that you're worshiping with us and part of this family of faith that is not the same, that doesn't think the same or vote the same or love the same, but is making room on this journey to be followers of Jesus on the way. So bring yourself to this time and bring all of your prayers and your wonderings and your gifts for the family of faith needs you to be part of it. We do this in the assurance that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Michelle and I am the Children and Families Ministry Coordinator here at Islington United Church. Happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful mothers out there. We would now like to invite all our children and young ones for a time of godly play following the service at 12 p.m. today. You can email me at michelle at islingtonunited.org in order to receive the Zoom link and participate. We look forward to spending time with all of our familiar friends and extend a very warm welcome to any new children and families who are interested in joining us this morning. Thank you so much and we look forward to seeing you soon. Today is Mother's Day, and on this Sunday, we light candles and remember the light of mothering. To those who have lost a child, we mourn with you. To those who have lost a mother, we grieve with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badges of food stains, We appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoption, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who gave birth to their first child or a child this year, we celebrate with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes and prods, tears and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things, We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we give thanks. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who aren't able to be with their mothers in hospital or long-term care or quarantine, we feel the loss with you. To those who live through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of parenthood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who will soon have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who struggle to survive parenting in this time, we know you. To those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. And to all those who choose to nurture this world in important ways, men and women, we honor these decisions with deep gratitude. Amen.
And as we turn towards Psalm 42, let's invite these ancient words of Scripture to speak into this moment. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God. With glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall praise him again. My help and my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, My adversaries taunt me, while they say to me continually, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God.
on the fifth Sunday in the season of Easter, we remember how the disciples went north to Galilee, like Jesus had told them. It was a long journey, some hundred miles. It took about a week to walk. Many of them were fishermen, so they went to the Sea of Galilee to rest. This was a place they had known as boys. They had fished there with their fathers. Suddenly, Peter stood up and said, I'm going fishing. The rest went with him to prepare the boat. Soon they pushed out into the lake, and the sail filled with wind. They fished all night, but still they caught nothing. The sounds and the smells of the lake comforted them, though. They felt at home. In the morning, the sky turned pink and then blue. They could make out the shore and someone standing by a fire there. They could see the smoke and the red glow from the charcoal burning. Have you caught anything? A voice called out. All they could say was no. Throw your nets in on the other side. What did they have to lose? They pulled in their empty nets and threw them out on the other side of the boat. Almost immediately, they could feel fish moving in the nets. John was not paying attention to the fish, though. He leaned forward and watched the man moving on the shore. He said to Peter, It is the Lord. Peter stood up. He jumped into the water and he swam. He swam over toward the shore and he felt the stones under his feet as he waded ashore. The others turned the the boat toward land. The nets were so full that they could not pull them in, so they dragged the nets behind them on the boat. As they walked toward the fire, the stranger called out, Bring some fish! And they did. When they gathered around the fire, they knew the stranger was no stranger at all. It was Jesus. But they were afraid to say anything. Have some breakfast, he said. They began cooking fish on the fire, and he gave them some fish and some bread to eat. They talked as they ate. The fish and the bread tasted like home. Then Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? Yes, of course. Then feed my lambs. Tend my sheep. He then began to talk to Peter about growing old, and how you need help then. But people sometimes take you in directions that you don't want to go. Years later, they wondered if Jesus had been preparing Peter for his death in Rome as an old man. Jesus said, follow me. Did he mean all of them? No. Peter got up, and the two of them walked along the shoreline together. Peter looked back and saw John following them also. What about this man? Will he die like the rest of us? It is not for you to know such things, Jesus said. Peter fell silent, and Jesus was gone. Herein lies good news. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy One, we make a home in our heart for you for these ancient words from a song, for this story to come to life again. We pray to you as creator, naming the mothering of earth as part of your invitation to life. And as we step into this story again, between the words that are said and the words that are heard. May your word be known. Amen. So this is the one. This appearance story comes to us on Mother's Day, and I wonder how it connects. The disciples had been through so much together, they're like a family. They are connected through Christ's love like brothers. They've journeyed night and day together, eaten together, prayed together, disagreed together, suffered together, laughed together, grieved together, been part of the rebirthing of God together. 
And now the disciples are learning to know Jesus in a new way. They've encountered the risen Christ and listened when he asked them to go to Galilee. They are not in quarantine. They can go to Galilee, a hundred miles on foot back home to the front line of Jesus' ministry with the poor, the sick, and the oppressed. They aren't really sure what to do when they get there, so they do what most of us do when we're confused or stuck or worried or grieving. We go back to what we know. Old patterns, old rituals, old ways, the familiar and the known, some that serve us, and some that don't. Peter gets an idea. Let's go fishing. They know how to do that. It was once their only way. They fish all night and come up empty. By the time the stranger calls, throw your nets on the other side, nothing they've tried has worked, and well, they've got nothing to lose. So they listen. Anyone else's family during this crisis trying some old rituals, old ways, old patterns, and finding they aren't really working during this time? Yet they're so familiar and known. They served us once, and we think they'll serve us again. We keep at it day and night trying to keep a schedule, parenting in our old way or the ways of our parents. Or if we live alone, we had routines and interactions with our friends, our family, our family that served us and now sometimes come up empty. At this point, almost two months in, while we might feel we've got nothing to lose, we might as well listen. Listen to the one whose love carries to the one who keeps showing up for us when we need him the most. Listen to the one who calls us to life, who offers us some direction, who offers that direction to those he loved, his family. He calls out to us, change direction, try another way, change perspective. He reminds us of other stories of struggle and survival, and he speaks words to us, peace be with you. Do not be afraid into every situation. And then after providing so much more than we need, he says, have some breakfast. Breakfast, the most important meal of the day. In North America today, it's Mother's Day. And a lot of focus is on breakfast or brunch if you aren't an early riser. Families making breakfast in bed for a loved one, pancakes, French toast, kids making something to eat for the first time. Restaurants full because today is a day for celebrating and not for cooking. It's often a day when no matter how tumultuous it is at home, there can be a pause to say, have some breakfast. In our house, Mother's Day or not, I love the moment to say have some breakfast because it reminds me it's a new day. What happened before is over and we are invited into now. Today, the familiar, those old rituals and ways may not be happening in your family because you don't have what you need to do it in the way you've done because restaurants and flower shops are non-essential, because you're not physically with your family, because you're grieving this morning for a mother who's died. You may be doing this day differently. Zoom, FaceTime, phone calling, lighting a candle to remember, standing outside someone's window or apartment building to sing or shout love, trying a new way to have some breakfast to be family. And if Mother's Day is a hard and complicated day that you can't wait until it's over, I hear and hold that for you. For all of us who struggle to mother or in being mothered. So let's not miss the forgiveness part of this family story. After breakfast, Peter the rock, 
Remember him? The one who slashed off the ear of the soldier when Jesus was arrested. The one who denied Jesus three times. The colossal failure as a disciple. Jesus forgives Peter in the asking three times, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? The past is gone. It's a new day. That was then, and this is now. He also says, do you love me more than these? More than what? More than the fish, the boat, the net? Do you love me more than the old ways? Do you love me enough to try something new? To keep going? To trust that this love will carry? All families and families are trying a new way right now, looking to find what works and what doesn't. We have dear friends that we used to get together and watch movies with, and now we're using Zoom to watch a movie together at the same time but not be in the same place. And if I had one invitation for you this afternoon, I'd love you to check out a movie. You can get the Disney Channel just for seven days for free and just watch this one movie called Elephant. And as long as you can overlook the fact that the narrator is Meghan Markle and she has a quite unique relationship with her in-laws family right now, if you can move past that, I invite you into a powerful story of God creator. The setting is in the Kalahari Desert. This movie took the story that James shared with you and brought it to life for us now as we figure out what family and mothering look like at this time. It's about a tribe of elephants. Their leader is Gaia. For 50 years, Gaia has been learning what it means to lead and connect to all the wisdom that has gone before. Gaia has a sister named Shawnee and a little nephew named Jomo. It is amazing to think about elephants on Mother's Day. For to become a mother, an elephant is pregnant for two years. A journey. Elephants in the Kalahari are some of the last ones left to journey together from the floodplain of the delta across the desert to their watering holes. Back and forth, this journey unfolds. And it's the female elephants who travel together, who know the way from water hole to water hole. For they know the way and where to stop to have breakfast. See, along this journey, they have to trust each other. They have to care for each other. And repeatedly in the stories throughout the movie is the sentence that they never leave their family behind. They care for the little ones. And elephants show love similarly to humans. They make circles around each other when they're under attack. They protect the weak and the vulnerable. They trust their leader, Gaia, For she knows when to stop, when to go, when to eat, when to change direction, and when to have breakfast. The story of these elephants mirrors the story of these fishermen who learn about love through their leader and who trust that when their leader dies, that another leader, not always the one that's expected, will take his place, or will continue to keep them together. This invitation in seeing the story in your own family, in your church family, in the beat of creation, in the stories of fishermen who know about long nights when nothing happens, 
and who yet don't give up hope. Elephants who stick together and take the journey when they could have stayed. This invitation in the story this morning is to find that love will carry, to start walking the road in a new way, but to remember that the one who leads us hasn't left us and has left us with leaders to follow, to pay attention to. Let's walk the road with Jesus. Let's continue to be part of this broader family together. We do this knowing we're not alone. Please join me now in prayer. <clears throat> Mother in God, you gave us birth in the bright morning of the world. We remember mothers everywhere who have put the needs of their families before themselves. For those quiet, faithful mothers, we give you thanks and praise, O oh God. Help us to honor them by returning their gifts of sacrifice and caring. We remember mothers everywhere who have nurtured and cared for their children, even those who seem unable to return this precious love. For these courageous and tenacious mothers, we give you thanks and praise, O oh God. Help us to honor them through acts of forgiveness and reconciliation in our own families. Mother in Christ, you took our form, offering us your food of light, grain of life and grape of love, your very body for our peace. We remember mothers everywhere who have brought their children to Jesus, mothers who, through words and actions, have shown their children the meaning of discipleship. For these spirit-filled teachers of the gospel, we give you thanks and praise, O oh God. 
Help us to honor them by sharing the good news of Jesus with our children for generations to come. Mothering spirit, nurturing one, in arms of patience, hold us close so that in faith we root and grow until we flower, until we know. We remember our mothers who have left this earthly home, mothers who have blessed us with their love, patience, compassion, and wisdom, mothers who have taught us to be a blessing to others. God, tell them we love them. Tell them we miss them. For these mothers everywhere who have left us with the gift of wonderful memories, we give you thanks and praise, O God. Help us to honor these precious ones in all we say and do. We pray this in Jesus' name, who invites us to pray together. I give such thanks for the way that Islington United cares for families, for the work that Michelle Reese is doing with our young ones and their families. The, there's just so many opportunities in this time for us to be connected in new ways. Former families who lived in our neighborhood and who have moved away are reconnecting in because we can meet online. I am so grateful for your generosity that lets this time feed families and lets the work of the church connect to people of all ages. We do that by giving generously and courageously. The offering will now be received as we're blessed with the gift of song.
We offer what we have and recognize the mothers of this church who have cared and shown compassion and such hard work over the generations. We honor them as we offer our tithes and gifts in this prayer. Holy One, bless our offerings and transform them into compassion for others, into community for the lonely, and hope for the church and the world. Amen. It's May the 10th. It's May the 10th, and you may have wondered what happened to the story because we paused for a little while to engage these Easter stories. But on the 31st, we'll pick back up with the chapter where the church is born. It'll be the story of Pentecost. So if you haven't had a chance to read through, now's your time. The next three weeks, you can catch up, and then we'll be on the last four chapters together, starting on the 31st of May. There is much to continue to engage us as the weather turns warm, as the green and growing things are starting to flower. Pay attention to the things that are growing, not just around the church building, but in the ways of what we're offering to be a church family at this time. We are grateful that you're continuing to deepen and grow in your faith as we walk together as a church family. Stay tuned. Let's sing our departing song, May the God of Hope Go With Us. go from this place surrounded by the unconditional love of God and following in the way of the Christ who risked for love. And may the Holy Spirit lead you, reminding you that this love will carry. Amen. Amen.